Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. For you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We'll now say the Gloria. If you turn on the Breaking Bread, breaking bread uh, workbook, it's on the inside cover. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a suitable partner. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals, but none proved to be suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. May the Lord bless us in all the days of our lives. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. 
Blessed shall you be and favored. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recess of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they no longer are two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorced his wife and marries another, commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you are the Gospel of Prince Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Well, marriage, divorce, and remarriage, it's all there in today's gospel. It's all there in the political debate of our times. And it's all there in the hearts and minds of the vast majority of young people who wonder if the high ideal of marriage vows is really worth the risk, given the seemingly high rate of failure. Marriage, divorce, and remarriage. It's all there as a question in our church and in our ministry. So many times like the elephant standing in the middle of the room that no one dares to name. You know, today I think to myself, how many families or how many divorced 
or remarried Catholics, both in and out of the church, re-experience the pain and hurt of divorce when they think about today's topic of today's reading. Especially if you are the innocent party of a failed marriage. And what if you're the guilty party of a failed marriage? What if you were the alcoholic in the marriage, or the one with the anger management problem, or the one who was cheating in a marriage? Is there no hope for repentance and recovery? Of course not. There is always hope for repentance and recovery and healing. But here is a truth that cannot be ignored. What is certainly true is this, that the current culture of permissiveness of divorce and remarriage is not as harmless as the world would have you believe. It has real consequences. It does real harm, both emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. You know, social scientists tell us that in today's young people, most of them are hesitant about marriage. And coming from the most divorced generation in American history, they know firsthand, either in themselves or in their friends, the hurts and pains that follow a divorce. And so they have developed an almost instinctive reluctance to enter into a marriage. So what can I say that would help to lift the burden from so much sadness when our decisions or vows and commitments don't work out, when they fail? What can I say that would give hope to young people and to you to encourage you to see the blessing that marriage can be, to not be afraid of taking risks and the risk of marriage? Well, the first thing I want to do is hold up the ideal of marriage. It is part of the blessing that God gives us in the gift of creation itself, which we read in those first two chapters of Genesis, as we hear Jesus speak about it in the gospel. To make the commitment of marriage and to be open to a family, that can set you up for a life of enduring happiness and fulfillment, more than any job or career would ever give. But if you want that, if you're willing to take the risk, and this is truly a risk worth taking, young people and those who seek to enter into marriage need to be realistic by training themselves into the habits and the virtues of marriage. We don't develop the habits of faithfulness by sleeping around. We don't develop the skills of interpersonal honesty by lying about ourselves or holding back our past history or saying things that disguise our true selves. We don't develop the virtues associated with fair play and honesty by cheating in significant relationships, either in thought or word or deed. If you want assurance of success, if you want to reduce the risk of this venture, then you must prepare yourself. Indeed, the risk of any venture gets reduced the better we prepare ourselves for it. That's true in life, and that's true in marriage. And so the question is, how are you preparing yourself to develop the habits and virtues of marriage? If you are married, how are you reinforcing those virtues and habits? The question for the church is, how are we as a community helping you prepare for the venture of marriage and family life? And even more, how are we as a church and a community helping couples through the difficult times of marriage to grow and to strengthen their marriages? But sometimes marriages fail. We all know that. In the face of failure, and disappointment, and the defeats of life, Jesus provides us inner healing and understanding and encouragement and hope for the future. We, too, as members of the church, have a part to play, respecting the decisions that people make for their lives, taking people as they are here and now, and welcoming them 
That is the heart of the ministry that is Christ-like. That is what we are called to do. The ideal of marriage in the midst of the reality of divorce and remarriage in a world that wants to change the meaning of the sacrament given to us by God. Faithfulness to Jesus demands that we uphold that ideal and promote that ideal, while at the same time we must minister with compassion to our brothers and sisters in the face of failures and defeats and disappointments that life can bring. May Christ, who is faithful, and who holds us close to his heart be our strength, both in striving for the ideals as well as when we know the defeats and disappointments of life. Amen. Let us stand now and profess our faith. If you turn again to the front cover of the Breaking Bread work, I would love to do the Apostles' Creed, but we don't have there, so we're going to do the Nicene Creed, which starts at the bottom on the left side. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers and petitions before our Heavenly Father. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Can I go in the back and give you the host? I think I forgot to put it on there. Do you know where the host is at? Mm -hmm. Ask the host. Ask for some help in the back, okay? okay? You can go ahead. Heavenly Father, graciously hear the prayers of this, your family, and answer them all according to your merciful will. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, you will become for us the bread of life. Your mercy is falling on our shepherds, you bring your hands up to shepherds. 
for in our humility. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. May our sacrifice in the sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord our God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifice instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even to fashion for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Oh, we're going to have to work on that amen for later. <laughs> At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we make holy life to us, we see this. Lamb of God, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the word of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, gave death, gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments. And never let me be parted from you. Thank you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ come forth to tell life.
though many, we are one bread, one body. For we all partake in the one bread and one chalice. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. And as mentioned before in the uh, beginning uh, announcements, starting tomorrow we have daily Mass, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, with confession starting at 11, with Mass at 11.30, and Tuesday, Thursday, uh, confession starting at 5 p.m., 1700, and Mass starting at 17.30. So if you'd like to take advantage of either sacrament, uh, trying to make it as available as possible and, and staggered. So if you need to, uh, if you can't make it in the midday, hope you can make it in the evening. And I hope to see you guys all, at least sometime throughout the week, right? And you don't have to necessarily see me. You want to see Jesus, which that's really the whole point of it all. Um, please also stay afterwards. I think uh, a small social gathering. Uh, someone brought some donuts. I got a sweet tooth, so definitely get there ahead of me so I don't eat them all. I don't want to get fat either. So anyway, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks.